Okay, good morning, children of the Most High. This is Chukwemeka with the Ibu Hebrews. Um, brothers and sisters, um, in my last video, I explained that the fraud that they call the cause of harm or the cause of Canaan, it's interesting for you to know that some Christian bodies actually teach this as a matter of principle. Uh, Christian churches like the Jehovah Witness, like uh, the um, What's it called? The Mormons, the, the Seventh day Adventists, and the Church of Later day Saints, or whatever. This is a principal teaching to them. Isn't it funny that a lot of black people are attending the, those churches? Anyway, today I'm not going to focus on that. I, I explain to you, brothers and sisters, my opinion about um, the children of Canaan in that video. I mentioned at the 27th minute in that video. I mentioned that the children of Canaan eventually left the Middle East and came back to their land here in West Africa. And it's not very far-fetched, brothers and sisters. If you look at the tribes in West Africa, you will be seeing a lot of children of Canaan as mentioned in the Bible. That's why I keep saying the children of Canaan are normal people like everyone else. They lived and interacted with the Hebrews in Jerusalem. The children of our Jebusites, they lived there with the Hebrews. They even intermarried. At some point, a lot of them took up Hebrew religion. And today, in the video I'm going to show you today, you are going to see that. If you look at the tribes in West Africa, you will see a lot of tribes that are mentioned in the Bible. Today, I'm going to take Southern Nigeria as an example and show you a lot of the, uh, the Canaanite tribe that surround the Hebrews today. We, the Hebrews, we, live, we still live among the Canaanites, the children of Canaan today, and we live peacefully. So anyway, what I want to show today may not be pleasing to a number of people. But again, let me point this. This is my opinion. A, a, a people need to understand that in this channel, what I try to do is to tell the truth from my own perspective. You don't have to agree with what I say. If you do not agree with what I say, it's okay. You can have your own alternate opinion. Okay? I just want to put this out there. So let's start, um, children of God. This is a map of what we call Ebo land today. This is an approximate map of Ebo land. So I will go around the tribes that are mostly surrounding what we call Ebo land today and show you how they are children of Canaan in the Bible. Not all of them, there are hundreds, when I say hundreds, hundreds of tribes in southern Nigeria alone hundreds of independent tribes but I've identified a few of them that are mentioned in the Bible so let's start okay most of you have heard of the city called Calabar most of you have heard of it it's a beautiful city with beautiful people now if you look up the, the city in Calabar you find out that this, the Calabar is also called the city of Canaan, Canaan city or Canaan land. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know who gave it that name. I don't know why it's called that. But today, brothers and sisters, you will realize that that name is correct. Whoever gave it that name knows something that you probably don't know. If you go to the west of Nigeria, towards Ogun State, there is a place called Canaan, Canaan land as well. That was named by the redeemed Christian Church of God people. They call it Canaan land in Ogun State. Why would they choose Canaan land? I don't know. But brothers, brothers and sisters, today, after what I'm going to explain to you, you will realize that those names are correct. Those people are children of Canaan. Now let me start from Calabar in the east. Calabar is a city that was founded by a people called the Ataba people. Ataba means my Abba or house of Abba. Okay, now 
who is Abba. Abba is a child of Canaan. If you read the book of Joshua, chapter 15, okay, he mentioned that he talked about a man named Abba. How do you know that the, the Abba was mentioned in the book of Joshua chapter 15 in verse 13? He was mentioned as the father of Anak. Brothers and sisters, the Anak people that is mentioned as the children of Canaan in the Bible, in the book of Joshua, they are mentioned in the book of Joshua chapter 15 verse 13. They are also mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 11 and the book of Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. You will see the, that the Anak people were mentioned in the Bible. Brothers and sisters, those are the Anang people today. The Bible interpretation called it Anak. But those are the Anang people. They can be found in the Kalapa Akwaibum area of Nigeria today. Okay, the name of their father is Abba. That is where you get the name Kalaba from. Uh, Professor Alezi in his book mentioned that Kalaba means Caleb Abba. Brothers and sisters, if you read the book of Joshua, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, was the one who uh, took over the land of Anak, the son of Abba in the Bible. Caleb was from the tribe of Judah. Children of the Most High, let me remind you that the people we call Abba people today, the people we call Abia state people today in Igbo land, they are of the tribe of Judah. Is it a coincidence that in the Bible, the ch children of Judah took over the land of Abba, the father of Anak, and today the people of Abba who are of the tribe of Judah in Igbo land are still living in close proximity to the children of to the people of Anang and the people of Abba. Do you think it's a coincidence? No, it's not a coincidence. No, the, like I said, the people that we call the Anang people in Nigeria today, those are the Anak mentioned in the Bible. The Bible mentioned that the Anak people are fierce warriors. They are fierce. They, 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 they are giants. They are fierce warriors. Brothers and sisters, those same traits are also common with the Anang people in the Kwaibum state today. These are even the, if you read a lot of um, if you read a lot of books on the slave slave trade, the slave masters were scared of the Anang people. Okay, because they are fierce warriors, as they have always been in the biblical time. These are what they call the Anang. The biblical interruption called them the Anak, but they are the Anang. Their name has not changed, and they come from the. They are the original inhabitants of the city we call Kalaba. If you also look at in South in the Akwaibu State again, you see a place that is called Ataba. These are the, this this are the. Uh, these are the children of Abba, relatives of the Anak people. Okay, by so by, by that extension, there is another place that is called the Oron people, very close to the sea, very close to the boundary with Cameroon. The Oron people are what you call the Horites in the Bible. Okay, these are children of Canaan. If you look at their culture as well, it's, it has a lot of similitude to the Canaanites in the Bible. I don't know who gave Calaba city of Canaan. I don't know who did, gave it that name. But brothers and sisters, now do you see that that name is correct? Do you see it now? Let's keep going. We're going towards west. Now, if you go to a place in River State, there is a place, a place in River State that is called Andoni. Andoni is a place, a, a city in River State. They even have a river called the, the Andoni River. Brothers and sisters, let's go. Let's go to the Bible and let me show you the Andoni people as mentioned in the Bible. Okay, we are going to the book of Joshua. Brothers and sisters, like I said, the, like I said, the Andoni people 
are in River State today. They live in close proximity to the Igbos in River State today. They call the Anthony people. Brothers and sisters, I want you to open to a Bible in Joshua chapter 10, in verse 1. You will see that there is a king called Adoni Zedek. At Joshua chapter 10, verse 1. You see a man named Adoni Zedek. Adoni Zedek means king of Adoni. The word Zedek means king or ruler or chief or high priest. That is it's from there that you get the name Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a king. The word Zedek means king. So Adoni Zedek was the king of Adoni. The Adoni people, brothers and sisters, are still here today. They are in river state. Their name has not changed one bit. The name of the river in their community, if you read the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua mentioned that the children of men named their cities according to the, their name and even the rivers in their communities. They named it according to their name. The name of the river has not changed. It is still called River Adoni till this very day. The Adoni people are there to this very day. Joshua chapter 10 in verse 1, he of the name of the man named Adoni Zedek. Adoni Zedek means king of Adoni. Like I said, the word Zedek means king. That's where you get the name Melchizedek. Melchizedek was king, king of Jerusalem. For those of you who think that the Canaanites are Nephilim, that's not true. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 14, after Abraham went and fought with Chaldoloma and Nimrod and defeated them, he came back and he paid tithes to Melchizedek. Melchizedek, brothers and sisters, was king. He was king. He was in Jebusite, and you will see that today. We will talk about Melchizedek later. So that's for the Andoni people. Let's keep going east. Still in this Niger Delta area, brothers and sisters, still in the Niger Delta area, if we go to the book of Joshua, we'll go to the book of Joshua, and again, I'll recommend brothers and sisters go and read the book of Joshua, especially Joshua chapter 15. You see a lot of communities there that have very that are very similar. Joshua chapter 16 verse 14 for instance talk about this, the children of Annan. These are the Annan people today. Let's go and read Joshua chapter still Joshua chapter 15 verse 10. Joshua chapter 15 verse 10 it talks about a city that is called Timna. Timna is a city of the Canaanites. In fact the name Timna is a female name among the Canaanites. That name is a Timna is also a daughter of Seir. There is a city that is named after her that is called Timna. Brothers and sisters, there used to be a city in Nigeria today that is called that same name. But that city, we, does not, we don't know the name anymore. But if you read the book of Olauda, you won't know, right? He talked about how he was, when he was sold from his father's compound and was taken along the creeks of Niger Delta. In, page, in, in this, um, Version of his book. If you look at page 44 of his book, he said, I did not remain long after my sister. I was again sold and carried through a number of places till after traveling a considerable time, I came to a town called Timma. And then, if you continue reading, you see how beautiful he said that that city was. See, the city was very beautiful. The name of the city is called Tinma, T I N M A H, Tinma. Brothers and sisters, the biblical interpretation of that name is called Tinna. The M and the N were interchanged. The city used to be in the Niger Delta area of Nigeria. A lot of people who have studied the work of Olao Daikonu, today they speculate that that city could be either Wari or Ueli. But nobody really know. He said that he described the city in great detail, and the name of that city is called Tima. It was here in southern Nigeria. Okay, let's keep going. And that name Tima is a city of the Canaanites. Let's keep going, brothers and sisters. Let's keep going. 
Now we'll go to the uh, Western Nigeria, where you talk about where the, the area that are called Ogun State. Okay, Ogun State has a tribe of people. It's, uh, of course, Western Nigeria is mostly the Yoruba tribe. It's basically the Yoruba tribe, but in Ogun State, there are people that are called the Ijebus. The Ijebu people, brothers and sisters, are what they call the Jebus in the Bible, the Jebusites. If you read the book of Joshua, chapter 15, in verse 63, the last verse, it says that the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they were, they, they, they were not kicked out by the children of Judah. They lived together. Okay? So when you hear Jerusalem as a city, when you hear what happened to the Hebrews in Jerusalem, it was happening to not only the Hebrews, but to the children of Canaan named the Jebusites because it was their city in the first place. As in they built that city. Brothers and sisters, the Ijebu people, there are, there are people that are called the Ijebu Ibo today. These are the Jebusites that have adopted the Hebrew religion. And if you look at their culture, that is the Jebu Ibo, their culture, their names and everything, it has a whole lot of similarities with the Ibo people today. These are the children of Jebus or the Jebusites that retain, that adopted Hebrew customs. They are still there today. They, we call them the Ijebu Ibo. There are not there are a number of Ijebus, but you know these are the Ijebu Ibo. And if you look at their names, their culture, and everything, their attitude, it is very similar to the Ibo people today. These are original children of Canaan, but they adopted the Ibo, the Hebrew culture, because they lived with the Hebrews in Jerusalem together. Brothers and sisters. If you look at the book of Second First Chronicles chapter twenty one, First Chronicles, okay, the book of First Chronicles chapter twenty one, it talks about a man named Onan the Jebusite. It was Onan the Jebusite on First Chronicles chapter one verse uh, chapter twenty one, in verse fifteen, it talks about a man named Onan the Jebusite. Onan the Jebusite owned a trashing floor on the top of Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is a holy mountain. If you read the book of Jubilees, you realize that that's where Abraham went to pray. That's where Isaac went to pray. That's where Jacob went to pray. It's a holy place. And the Most High wanted to remain in that holy place. So he told David that that's where he's going to build the tabernacle. David went to Onan, the Jebusite, and bought the place from him and built the tabernacle there. Go and look at First Chronicles chapter twenty-one, verse fifteen. Go and look at Second Samuel chapter Second Samuel chapter twenty-four. Second Samuel chapter twenty-four. The man is called Araona. In the book of Chronicles, he is called Onan. In the book of Samuel or Shemaiah, he is called uh, the name Samuel is actually called Shemaiah. The name uh, in the book of Second Shemaiah chapter twenty-four, he was called Arauna. He is a Jebusite. The Jebus are still here, are here today in Nigeria. They are called the Ijebus. They are the people who originally built Jerusalem before the Hebrews took it over as their inheritance. Brothers and sisters, I mentioned Melchizedek in Genesis chapter fourteen. The priest Melchizedek, do you know, brothers and sisters, is a Canaanite as well. Mer Melchizedek was, in the region of 14, Melchizedek was named the king of Salem. Salem is the place you call Jerusalem today, the city of the Jebusites. So Melchizedek, even though he was a Canaanite, he still worshipped the one true God. And Abraham was not the only one who worshipped the one true God. Abraham was the one whose record was kept. But Melchizedek also worshipped the one true God. And he is a son of Canaan. That is why after Abraham came back from battle, he had to go and pay tithe to Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a Jebusite. Melchizedek is what you call today a Yoruba pastor. You see, Yoruba pastors have been collecting tithes from time immemorial. They are still collecting tithes today. Lots of Yoruba pastors, lots of pastors that collect tithes, they are Yorubas. So you realize that Melchizedek is actually a Yoruba person. 
He is a Jebusite. So, these are commun uh, communities that are here in southern Nigeria that are, and you can trace them clearly to the Bible. That's why when I tell brothers and sisters that we, the Hebrews, we are people of the Bible, we came here through the river Niger. And every other tribe actually came here, we ran down here after the white people invaded the Middle East, we ran down here through the river Niger. I don't say this lightly, it's because I have done research that kind of collaborates that. Okay, so I, I, I do wish brothers and sisters would see this for in the information that it provides. It, it At least it tells our people that the idea that we are the people of the Bible is not far-fetched. The fact that the white man came and wrote down our religion, wrote down our culture in a book that they call the Bible does not necessarily mean that it's tears. Gentrification of our culture started a long time ago. And so when you look at the tribes here in, in West Africa, you look at the tribe in Nigeria, for instance, you don't need to go far. You don't need to, for instance, look at the Ashantis. Right? The Ashantis are children of Ashan, they are also Canaanites. It's mentioned in the book of Joshua chapter 16. The, uh, I'm sorry, I think Joshua chapter 21. The, if you also look at the uh, if you look at the book of uh, Joshua chapter 15, you see a, a land of the Canaanite that is called Ishan. Joshua chapter, 20, uh, chapter 15, verse 52, it talks about Ishan. The Ishan people are still here today. They are in a do state. If you also look at Joshua chapter 15, in that's in Joshua chapter 15, it talks about in a place that's called Idala. The Igala people, brothers and sisters, are here today. They are in Benue state. So, brothers and sisters, I would recommend go and read Joshua, the book of Joshua chapter 15. You see a number of tribes. All over the place, we the Hebrews, we run, we didn't run down here alone. We run down with the children of Canaan. All of us are here, and we're living here in Nigeria. Not only Nigeria, in the whole of West Africa, you will see a lot of the biblical tribes mentioned here in the Bible. They are here. We are the Hebrews, the children of Jacob. We run here, and I still maintain the fact that the Hebrews, the Hebrews alone, are the Hebrews of the Bible, the children of Jacob. Of the Bible, and one day I'll do a video to explain that. May the most high bless you, Jeremy Murphy. Salam.